Hello, I'm Tip Squirrel from tipsquirrel.com and in this video we'll be taking an introductory look at keyframes. Now keyframes can be found throughout the Creative Suite and possibly in their simplest form right here in Photoshop Extended. So let's take a look. Now I've gone ahead and got an image here from childstoryhour.com where they've got all kinds of colouring pages for us to have and uh, I've gone ahead and coloured this one in. Next, I don't want to blow my own trumpet, but I did do that all by myself. Anyway, let's have a look at keyframes. So we need the animation panel up. So I'm going to go to Window and Animation. And there we have it down the bottom. And our train layer is already visible and highlighted. Now it's labelled train because that's what the layer on the right hand side in the layers palette is also named. If you are going to do animations, it is strongly recommended that you do name your layers. It makes things a lot easier and we'll see that in just a little while. Okay, so I want to move this train and to do that I do need to use keyframes. So I want to move it from the left of the screen to the right of the screen, quite simple. So let's move it out of the left hand side to start with so we know where we're at. So I'm just going to use the move tool just as we do normally in Photoshop and I'm going to hold down the shift key just so I can keep it in a nice straight line and move it right the way off the page. There we go. Okay, so it's off the page. We know where it is. So let's have a look at our palette down the bottom, our animation timeline. And you can see we've got an attributes here, position, opacity, style and global lighting. So position is what we're after. So I'm going to hit this stopwatch here and that will mark where the layer is right now. If I was to hit that again, it would clear all the keyframes from that attribute, which we don't want to do, and it will do it without any warning. So there's just a general warning for you now. OK, so let's go ahead and go to perhaps eight seconds and then take our train layer and let's move it across the screen. And I'm going to move it right the way across and off. And you'll see, because I've moved this layer, it's put a keyframe in for us. So let's go back to the beginning and scrub our way through. This is the playhead that I keep clicking on here. And if I push this, play, just click and drag this playhead, you can see I can move it across. And the train is moving nicely from left to right. And we've got some play buttons and rewind buttons and all that kind of malarkey down the bottom. So let's press play and watch it chug its way across nice and slowly there from one side of the screen to the other. Now the beauty about this is it's put all those tweens, the in-between frames in for us, which is quite helpful. Okay, so what happens now if we want the train to stop about halfway? When it's in the middle, well, we'll put in another keyframe. And to do that, I'm gonna click here between these two arrows. You'll see there's just about to make out, perhaps on your screen, there's another diamond without a yellow in it. So I'm going to click that and there we have it. And now it has got a diamond in it. That means we are actually on a keyframe and we can move between keyframes using these arrows. So left will go to the next keyframe to the left and right to the next keyframe to the right. So there we have it. We're on this one. So let's move our playhead forward a little bit to about there. I'm going to copy this keyframe and then I'm going to paste the keyframe and it's pasted it where the playhead is. So now if I scrub along, you can see it stayed in place. So it's marked where we're at. And because the next keyframe doesn't change, it knows there's no change between the two. So now if we play that, our train should chug its way in and then stop when it gets to that keyframe and then start again when it passes it because it knows the next one the layer should be off the screen. Okay, let's stop that. Now we can, as we saw earlier on, change different attributes. So let's perhaps change the opacity. Right here, I want it to be 100%, just as the main engine comes on the screen. And I want it to fade in. So let's press the stopwatch. Now you'd hope then that this would fade in, but it doesn't. That's because it was at 100% to start with, and that's still 100%. So it's making no difference at all. But if we take it back, the playhead back to the beginning and we change our opacity down to zero, 
scrub the playhead we can see it just fades in nicely okay but it's already faded in before it's got to there that's no good for us so let's take this keyframe and just slide it along a bit so now it starts coming in a little bit later in fact it's coming in a bit too quickly let's have a look there we go that's better so now we've got no train coming in oh slowly now We've got a little bit of train, we've got the ghost of a train here as it comes in for some reason, and that is because this keyframe, let's jump to that one, is set at 4%, not 0%. Let's take that down to 0. And now there's no ghost of it there at all, he says. There is just a very slight ghost. What have I done? I've left it at 2%. 0. Right. Now we should have no trouble. OK, no ghost of the train at all. That's better no train in she comes and then stops etc etc okay let's have a look at one last thing while it's stationary let's add a style to it now this is just for demonstration purposes so we're not going to go too overboard but right here let's add style double click we'll add the style as we normally would in this case let's just add a quick drop shadow perhaps um, change the color that'll do we don't want anything too major so it's just for demonstration okay now that has been added to that layer just as the opacity was to start with so we need that to have no um, effects on it at all no style effects so we'll do that here we'll take away the effects drop that away adds the keyframe if we scrub along we can see it adds it there so now if we play it we can see that it fades in, chugs to the middle. When it stops, it gets its uh, drop shadow, and then it chugs off the screen. Now I'm thinking, that just takes all a bit too long. Well, just as we did earlier on, we can start moving these keyframes around. So I'm going to put a marquee around them, and I can just slide them along. I can slide this one along as well. And now it'll chug in slowly, perhaps, chugging slowly up here but it's moving much quicker because there's less time for it to get off the screen and there we go so that's keyframes at least an introductory to them let's have a look at another example I'm just going to click over here and I'm going to just play this one and you can see what happens so I'm going to click the play and in it all comes and we've used exactly the same principles as we did on the last one but we've just put it into a, a bit more of a everyday perhaps scenario let's have a look see what's going on i'll just bring the playhead to the beginning and we can see that the first thing that happens is that the red box and this is why i said it's very important to label your layers because now we can see exactly what's going on if it was just layer one layer two layer three we'd get very confused so red box here we come we've got our position keyframes from out the screen to in the screen which we just we did with the train then the yellow box that has an opacity from 0 to 100% just before it gets to 100% the uh, words breaking news start to fade in again using opacity and then last but by no means least we have the text um, about the increase of nuts prices um, coming up then. Now you'll notice that as it scrolls across it disappears behind that breaking news box and that's because we've got a layer mask on the text layer and if I alt and click that you'll be able to see the mask it's just a small gradient probably use them in Photoshop all the time alt and click it again just to make it disappear okay and there we have it and because this has a mask on it we can also also excuse me add the attributes to the mask as well so we can change the mask position and we can enable the mask vector masks as well we can also have a little play around with as much as text warp which I'm sure you'll want to have a play with okay that's our introduction of keyframes I'm tipsquirrel from tipsquirrel.com come join us for more of the same
Thanks for bearing with me. Bye-bye for now.